Okay, welcome. Uh, so what I'd like to do is show you how to um, solve for 2 sine squared of x plus 3 sine of x plus 1 equals 0. And when looking at a problem like this, uh, you know, we can't isolate the variable um, because one, we have two variables and we can't combine them because they're not even like terms. So when looking at a problem like this, you know, when we're looking into uh, other equations, well, especially when we had one of a quadratic form, we always want to look into factoring. And that's going to be the same thing because now I have my, my trig function is going to be squared. So I'm going to want to see, can I separate this or can I rewrite this as a factored form? Which in case, yes, you can. If I can rewrite this as 2 sine of x plus 1 times sine of x plus 1 in a factored form. So by factoring this out, um, I'm going to get this form. And I can just double check this by doing FOIL to see if it's correct. Now, the reason why we like factoring is to apply the zero product property. So now we can say, since this times this equals 0, that means that 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0, or sine of x plus 1 equals 0. So now what we need to do is we just want to solve for each one of these cases. So to solve for, or solve for our function, negative uh, sine of x, I'm going to subtract 1. So then I have 2 sine of x equals negative 1. Then I divide by 2, and I get sine of x equals a negative 1 half. Over here, I'll just subtract the 1, and I get sine of x equals negative 1. So now what I need to do is I need to find the values of my x when I didn't take the sine of it. I'm going to get these two values. So let's go and find a different marker here. And to do that, what I can apply is using my unit circle. That didn't work. This one does. So let's apply the unit circle to help us find all the values on the interval of 0 and 2 pi. However, we're going to want to find all the values um, of our trigonometric function. But we'll use the unit circle for our first interval to kind of help us out. So first of all, let's find the point when sine of x equals negative 1. Remember, that's going to be your y coordinate. So we know that that is going to be dealing with some kind of intercept. So I'm going to write in all the intercepts here. And you can see that the only point when sine of x equals negative 1 is at this point down here, creating an angle of 3 pi over 2. So I can say x equals, for negative 1, x equals 3 pi over 2. Um, however, now I also need to sign, find out the points where sine of x equals negative 1 half. Well, that's going to occur at two angles, which is going to be right here and right here. So the first angle is, uh, you can say, is going to be 7 pi over 6, as this has the coordinate point of negative square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half, where you can see the y coordinate is equal to negative 1 half. And then here, this angle, which is going to be 11 pi over 6, which has the angle of square root of 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out both of those angles. So I could say x equals uh, 7 pi over 6 and x equals 11 pi over 6. But I don't want to just find the solutions on 0 to 2 pi. I want to find all the solutions. Because remember, the sine function is not just constricted to 0 to 2 pi. It keeps on going on and on in the positive and the negative direction. So I want to find all of the angles. So when looking at x equals 3 pi over 2, if I say here's my first angle, I want to find every single time that my angles or my I can evaluate when sine of x equals negative 1. So that means I want to find all the coterminal angles. So I'm going to add plus. 2 pi n. And for each one of these angles, you can see that if I keep on adding 2 pi, I'm going to always occur, I'm always going to get the value when sine of x equals negative 1 half. So for these two, I'm going to add 2 pi n and plus 2 pi n. And I add n because remember there's infinite many coterminal angles for our sine function. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you solve for 2 sine squared of x plus c3 sine of x plus 1 equals 0. Thanks.